Okay, we're again now. I think this is episode number four. Me and Emily, we're off out. Well, as you can see, we've got harvest, we've got sunshine, and it's been a, quite, a, quite a lot of evenings where I've been sitting out and it's been freezing bloody cold this summer. But tonight, perfect night. I'm acting on a bit of intel where I, I've, I keep in close contact with the combine driver, the guys on the corn cart, and um, obviously they let me know where they've seen the odd fox. Now, the field we're actually going across now, a fox come out of it. Um, I did put a bait pipe over next to the railway line. I didn't get no takers whatsoever. So I've had some other foxes that I've heard about and I've sort of gone and sorted those out. So come over here the weekend with Shell and the field we're going to tonight, I named it Foxfield before I knew actually what it is properly called. The reason why is I shoot a lot of foxes on it. Um, if you look across there now in front of us, over this way, you've got all that MOD land, which I border. I've got a wood up the top there. I've still got some standing wheat next to us here, but all of this has been cut. They've just turned the straw by the look of it, which is lifted it up, but I, I always feel that just makes the foxes feel a little bit more comfortable coming out. But so, good old fox field. I didn't get no takers on the bait. I thought, nah, I'll go and bait. Where I normally bait, there's a run. This year, this year, this year it's not, this year it's not as um, well used as it is in normal years. I can go there and it's like the M1. My sensors are starting to annoy us here. <laughs> but anyway, so we're gonna, I put some bait out, me and Michelle brought the dogs over. I put some bait out next to my run, where they often come out. And I checked earlier on this evening and the bait had gone. So I put another pigeon down, scattered some cat food, just to get the scent going. And me and Emily, we're gonna go and sit up which looks like it's going to be a beautiful evening. Hopefully we'll see a few hares, maybe the odd deer, and uh, hopefully a fox later on. But we'll have a chat again when we get there. sit tonight so this is probably my biggest bit of wood on the whole ground actually but it's not the side of this wood it's really what's behind it so if Emily turns that that there is just a mass of MOD ground so it's not touched it's not shot it's full of thorns it's full of dolls it's full of rabbits <laughs> and it's full of foxes. So I have to admit, back in the springtime, I shot a breeding pair here. I killed the dog and I killed the vixen, which probably just stops that initial, this field being full of cubs. So I sorted that out, but nevertheless, it's only a matter of time. And it always does. The foxes do feed from the MOD wood, of course, onto this farm. If you've got to bear in mind, probably only a half a mile there, in a fox's world, it's probably about six minutes trot, there's the farrowing field. Two fields over is one of our best partridge drives. So I really need to shoot the foxes, get them here at source as quick as I can before they actually spread out onto the farm. So tonight, it's a favorite place, like I said, I heard there was a fox come out of the field over there I put a bait pipe up, but just because it come out of there, this is probably home, as it always is. I talk about this run. The more you, the more you hunt your ground, the more you'll get used to where your foxes are gonna live, and normally where they where they come out, the exits, the entrances into woods, gaps in hedgerows, 
you build this knowledge up over the years. And hopefully I think I've got it right again, because like I said, I come over with my wife and my dogs, I shot a few pigeons and where the run is, as you see where the ground elevates, it's probably about sort of like 10 yards up onto that. The run is there on the left-hand side. It's where I put the bait, it's where it went. So yeah, I mean, other years it's looked like, like, a, like I said earlier on, it's looked like a motorway. This, this year it's not been, used nowhere near as much but it's definitely I think where the fox is going to come from it normally does so we've positioned ourselves here right on the edge of the edge of the woodland here of course we're looking up the direction of these swarms of straw they're quite high so if you imagine we sat back over there there's a good chance the fox if he didn't actually come over we wouldn't see it that has happened to me in the past so where we ourselves set up hopefully towards dark or after dark we'll pick the fox coming out to look at that bait hopefully it'll smell the cat food you know and I'll get a chance to do a bit of filming before I put it on the ground I've had one not long ago and I think when we actually probably show it to you at one point you're gonna be thinking god why aren't he shooting because I know I always do when I'm watching watching <laughs> fox video oh, I'm thinking oh, on fire fire but just for a bit of I suppose entertainment we, we do try and prolong the, the video in but we'll see because if I think for one second it's going to go it'll be getting it probably still got about another half an hour or more before it starts hitting dusk. This is when I always feel a bit guilty because you start talking to people and they say, oh, the nights are drawing in. I think, yeah, I'm not out so late before I get some action. A bit selfish of me, but then I do love it. This is probably, I can count on my hand how many evenings I've sat out when I've been warm. I mean, obviously in a minute, I'll be covering myself up. But pigeons, I've always loved hearing that. And if you listen to them properly, they'll always end up with, whoa, useless bit of information for you all, but that's the sad sort of person I am about wildlife. I've spent so much time sat listening to them. It's always good if you can hear a woodpecker laughing at you. On the way in, we see three magpies. Now I shoot every magpie I see, for obvious reason, for the game birds. But they got to be my best friend when it comes to sitting out for foxes. They give away a fox every time. So yeah, we see three on the way in. One for sorrow, two for joy, three for a girl. So maybe it'll be a vixen tonight, we'll see. <laughs> but um, no, like I said, we're probably gonna have to take the chatting down a bit now as it's night sort of gonna loom in on us. Um, pretty excited about tonight. I think we've got a good chance and um, I'm looking forward to us uh, getting some good footage later on. Well, that was near the action station, so just talking about a magpie, we had a quick chatter, then all of a sudden something came out on the field, but it was a hare. But, um, so that's put me now into hunting mode and um, maybe the chit chat's gonna stop and I'm gonna put my jacket on now. So we'll speak to you in a bit. So there you go, we had a blank tonight. I did roll the dice a little bit, I'd only baited it for one night. Um, 
I normally two or three nights get them nice and confident. We did try a bit of calling, but we were very close to the wood. Well, then again, we packed everything up just as I was putting my stuff away. A bloody fox did come out to the call. We moved a bit too quick. Give it about 10 minutes. Should have given it a bit longer. It's a school night and um, yeah, it's one of those. It happens. I hate it. Um, Traumatised that I'm going to be all night. But, um, but we'll get him. Um, I'll carry on the bait now. It's probably sunny Monday. I'll probably literally wait right till Friday before I even go back for that. I've got another one that I've got to go and sort out, so I'll, I'll just keep the bait going and um, I'll go and get it. And uh, so what we'll do is we'll, all the straw will be gone off the field. It'll just be a plain stubble. So then when I get the bugger, we'll just add it on to the end of this video, the kill shot. Good evening, bye. Okay, right, we're back after that fox that we sat up for a week ago. I've left it quiet because I had another couple of foxes to target, which I've gone and shot. Now, they cut this top field, the top of the wood, obviously, we sat at the bottom of the, um, what I call the MOD wood. Um, we're going to sit at the top side now. I had a trail cam set up. The fox has shown a couple of times, but with no regularity. And, um, and guess what? He didn't show last night. <laughs> but I'm not going to let that put me off because you'll probably be sick of hearing me say this you won't shoot them sat in the, in the armchair and that's how I feel look it's a great evening okay it never showed last night I'm going to come here we're going to sit up we'll give it a good hour into dark if that doesn't work I'll try a call now I did call last time at the bottom of the wood so I used my favourite, my plastic, my synthetic um, call. So because I used that, I'm going to use my metal one tonight. Slightly different tone, psychological probably, but I just feel because I've actually used that other one and he might have heard it and it didn't come, I will try a different, different call this time, different tone. So if he doesn't show up naturally, um, we'll have, hopefully stand a chance with that. Um, as you can see, the swarms of straw are still on this. It has two impacts. It does make them feel a bit safer coming out on it, but you can, <laughs> they can come out and you can't see the buggers as well. So, you know, there's, an, there's advantages to it and there is disadvantages to it. But we're gonna, we're gonna try our luck tonight. Just sat here. Um, I'm gonna, up a bit bloody higher it's like i said he hasn't been regular but we, we've got to give him a we've got to give him a go and that's what we're gonna do so we'll let you know how we get on
Well, I have to admit, I thought that was a youngster, but it ain't. It's a full grown vixen. Um, yeah. Proper set of teeth on her. Yeah, she's a adult vixen, so our plan worked. We sat down the bottom, we never got it. We come back tonight and um, there's the job done. We did see two though, so I've still got some work to do here. Um, but uh, brilliant, Emily's brought me luck again. We uh, had to change the plan, um, but that's how I hunt my foxes. I find out where they are and I put something in place to try and get them and it's worked tonight, so brilliant. Okay, I've got one confession. It all happened so quick. And like a tit, I never put the record button on. But at the moment, we got the Mars Thermal from ATN, which we're just using at the moment as a spot, and which we will move over onto the rifle. We just wanted to have a few goes with it first. And thankfully, Emily videoed it with that. So you'll be able to watch, uh, watch it through that. Um, yeah. Emily had one job to do, and that was to tell me to record now. I can't blame her. <laughs> she, thought I, she thought I was in the zone, but I'm still learning all these things. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Like I said, we sat down the bottom. We've now moved up the top. A different plan, and it's worked for us. But there was two foxes come out, so I will be back. See you later. Well, okay, I'm back out again. This is where me and Emily sat the other night. A pair come out, I managed to take one of them. Um, we sat around waiting for the other, no show. So I'm back here trying to clear up the uh, second fox. I've been putting some cat bait out. Um, the straw's now gone, so I've got a nice clear vision. Um, I'm sat back, it's quite a still quiet night. Nice and warm. Well, there you go. I thought I'd just try a bit of calling before I left. And there's number two. So, <laughs> what a cracking night this is turning out to be. Yeah, almost in the same place. Come out the top corner. And, um, yeah, bang on. <laughs> 